On today's episode, super clean water from cooling towers and grid scale battery storage does double duty for frequency control. Today's episode is brought to you by engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on engineering.com TV today. Production and distribution of clean drinking water, well, that's an essential engineering challenge everywhere. But even in developed nations, it can be complex and expensive. Surprisingly, in the US, about 40% of all water drawn from lakes, rivers, and wells isn't used for the traditional needs of drinking, irrigation, or sanitation, but is used to cool thermal power plants. Two-thirds of thermal plants use evaporative cooling, which produces the characteristic white plumes seen over fossil fuel and nuclear power plants. Now, that white plume is water vapor, a potentially significant source of clean water if it could be collected and concentrated. A small company launched as the winner of a 2018 MIT entrepreneurship competition may have the answer. The firm is called Infinite Cooling, and it uses research developed at MIT by the Varanasi Research Group to improve on a basic fog collection technology used in coastal areas worldwide. Current systems use cloth or metal meshes suspended in moving fog to collect 1 to 3 percent of available water. The research group improves efficiency by using similar principles to that seen in electrostatic air cleaners. A charged grid imparts electrical charge to water droplets passing through, which are then attracted to another grid of opposite polarity. Microscopic droplets agglomerate and fall by gravity for collection. The system was tested at MIT's thermal generation plant and also at the university's nuclear research reactor and has shown to produce water 100 times cleaner than the original cooling feed water. This very pure water has an immediate commercial value to the power plant as boiler water in the primary loop. Another advantage is the elimination of the characteristic clouds of white water vapor seen over commercial and industrial cooling towers, which can impair visibility for low-flying aircraft and occasionally road traffic as well. Testing in the MIT plants showed no effect on power plant operation, and the systems are expected to achieve regulatory approval relatively easily. For nations suffering freshwater shortages, seaside power plants that use seawater for cooling may harness this technology for drinking water production. The team plans to install test systems at a Midwest chemical plant and a 900 megawatt commercial power plant by the end of the year. We'll report back as testing continues. If you like this show, be sure to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell for our next episode. Grid-scale battery storage is a major growth industry worldwide as power utilities attempt to integrate renewable energy sources such as wind and solar into national power grids. Supplying reliable power isn't as easy as it looks. Solar photovoltaics produce DC current, which must be fed through inverters to produce alternating current. Wind turbines can produce AC, but like conventional generators, are dependent on the rotational speed of the alternator to produce the desired frequencies. For grid requirements, batteries are the best solution currently available for power generation systems that are intermittent in nature. An example is a recently announced project by Australia's AGL Energy Limited, who have ordered a 250 megawatt system to be installed on Torrens Island in South Australia. The system will be supplied by Vartzilla and will be the second largest of its kind in the country. The battery system will store energy produced by both renewables and conventional thermal generators, and when initially deployed will operate in a conventional grid following mode. Less well understood, however, is the potential of advanced battery storage to do more than store and release electrons. AGL plans to operate the system eventually in a grid-forming mode, making the battery a virtual synchronous generator. Now, VSG technology has been explored for years in conventional power generation, and the concept is simple. In a grid system powered by a single generator, the frequency of AC output is relatively easy to control. It's highly dependent on the rotational speed of the generator, and at commercial power scales, it uses the rotational inertia to provide good damping of the system if load is consistent. Add variable load and more power sources to a grid, however, and frequency control becomes more complex. With the appropriate controller, batteries can be used with inverters to act as a virtual form of that inertial mass, stabilizing frequency throughout a system. For large-scale photovoltaic projects, battery storage is a necessity, so the combination of storage and grid forming not only reduces the effective cost of green energy, but improves overall system efficiency where power supplies can vary from solar, wind, hydroelectric, and thermal. AGL expects the Vartzilla project to be operational in early 2023. Well, that's it for today's episode of This Week in Engineering, brought to you by engineering.com. For our deeper engineering series, visit engineering.com TV for exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future and Designing the Future, not found on our YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. Thanks for watching.